Well, yeah, look, I again, this just doesn't come from me. This comes from thousands of job seekers that I've worked with. People do not have an interest in working for assholes anymore. That's number one on the list. Amen. It's not money. It's life, again, too short to be working for somebody who is abusing you either uh, emotionally or, or financially, you name it. Anything that ends with L-Y that hurts, that's coming from your boss, that's got to be stopped. Time is up for that, okay? Sure. These people are being outed one by one by one and a whole lot of bad behavior that has taken place and been acceptable in business for a long time. Why? Because, well, you know, they're successful or they, they're rich or they have money. People are just tired of that. Agreed. Hey there, I'm super excited. Today I have a new success interview for you. It was my privilege to interview Rob Barnett. Passion and my mission to help you unleash your greatness with them. My heart goes out to the underdogs, that, that's on their way. If you think you can, go from good to great. Okay, let's motivate. Greatnesswithin.com. Oh. Jay Hoisington. Greatnesswithin.com. You see, Rob Barnett is the author of this new book, Next Job, Best Job. And let me tell you something, I've read the book and it's inspirational. You can feel his heart in the book as he shares many stories, but he also shares strategies that can help you land the best job and save time in the process. So you're gonna to wanna to check out and get a copy of this book. But in way of an interview and a little bit of background of Rob is he's a headhunter and you know what? He landed on that role later in life in 2018. He'll tell that story. It's a pretty amazing story, but he's an author. He's a headhunter, he's a podcaster, he's an entrepreneur, but he's also in the past was in senior management roles at MTV, at VH1, and also Audible, and he was even the president at CBS Radio. So he's got a lot of history to draw from. You're gonna wanna listen to this full interview as we dive into a lot of different ideas and strategies and so forth. Now, if you're watching this on my YouTube channel, hey, I invite you to subscribe to my YouTube channel, I'd really appreciate it. And make sure that you click that notification bell so that you're the first to be notified when I come out with a new motivational message or a success interview like this one. I know you're gonna enjoy it. And if you're listening to this because you downloaded the podcast episode from iTunes or Apple Podcasts or iHeartRadio or Spotify, hey, thanks for being a part of my community. And if you haven't subscribed yet, hey, I invite you to subscribe. And hey, if you wouldn't mind, leave a review. I'd really appreciate it. All right. Without any more said, let's jump right into the interview. Rob, welcome to the Unleash Your Greatness Within podcast. Thank you so much. I appreciate being here. Absolutely. Great to have you on the show. By the way, I've got your new book. So excited. You're just a couple days into it. It's uh, already had some success, I hear. So nice job and congratulations. Thank you so much. Yeah. It's a good feeling. My my mom is smiling up there somewhere, but the boy, oh, the yeah. boy wrote a book. <laughs> oh, that, that's awesome. That's awesome. Um, so let's do this. I think for the benefit of the audience, would you share with us a little bit of your backstory? How did you get here? Give us a little bit of the color into your story a little bit. And I think that'd be really valuable to our listeners. Sure. Well, I was a college kid, uh, maybe week one or week two in the dorm. The RA on the floor says, hey, guys, I do a radio show. You want to come down and see me do a radio show? And so my, my now best friend and I went and saw this guy. And we looked at him through the glass and said, well, we can do that. <laughs> and so uh -huh. job one, life one in this crazy long career was rock radio. Did that about 10 years, moved around the country. Job two, I fell into this thing called television. And for about 12 years and in the glory days, I was at MTV and VH1. I went back to radio mm. and in 04, 05, 06, depending on how you look at it, I was the president of CBS radio. And I was also the unlucky jerk who had to replace Howard Stern when he quit and went to satellite. So that was quite a challenge that threw me out on my butt and turned me into an entrepreneur for the first time as an entrepreneur, 
I ran a crazy company called My Damn Channel. We were 06 to 2016. For 10 years, we made original online series. We were early, 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 way before Netflix and Amazon. We were pioneering. We were these little rebels realizing that what we're doing today, this idea of uh, human beings inside little video screens, and even the iPhone wasn't created when we started this company, but we, we were some of the hundreds of people that thought we had a belief about the future being something that independent people could do like the big media companies of old. I've always been right. fascinated by that. In what now turns out to be what will be my last job ever, working for someone else. I was at Audible. And in 2017, I was one of the senior leaders in marketing. They gave me a project to work with a guy who had written a book dedicated to his son. The son's name was Bo. And the guy is the president of these United States. Oh. I worked with Joe Biden for three or four months. It was an incredible experience. First time I've had anything to do with a book. I was mm -hmm. the marketing guy for it. But at the end of that project, they came to me and said, sorry, uh, we're going to have a restructuring. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, what does that mean? And they said, yeah. your job's been eliminated. Mm -hmm. So now I'm home. It's June of 2018. And I am an overqualified unemployed media pro trying to figure out what's next and I'm stuck and I'm getting a little sad and I'm getting a little mad and I'm getting a little concerned because I got a lot of mouths to feed. So one day with no game plan, I grabbed my iPhone, I press record and I made a little video and I said, look, what I'm about to say is not unique. A lot of my friends are stuck and I'm stuck. Mm -hmm. And what's this new thing about ghosting? Where did that come from? Why is that okay? Why aren't people responding to emails and, and really well-crafted resumes and cover letters? I just decided to reach out yeah. with this problem. And that video blew up and got way too many views and way too many comments. So I woke up the next day and the next day and the next day, and I did it again and again and again. After about eight or nine days, a man saw this and said, listen, I met you at MTV long time ago. I love these videos. I need a chief operating officer. You're a headhunter, right? That's what you do. And I said, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then I quickly Googled it because we weren't Zooming. We were just love talking, it. right? Love it. So I'm Googling headhunter, recruiter, commission, percentage, fee. And it, it became a calling. Honestly, I'm not lying, TJ. It, it just, it blew my mind. It never would have occurred to me that my job would be to help you get a job. It just, it didn't occur to me. But when it did, I almost wept because I said, oh, you know what? I've had my run. I've done my time. I've learned a lot. I'm a 61 year old guy. Mm -hmm. I think I can help a lot of people. And I also am lucky enough to know a lot of CEOs and presidents who run the biggest media companies in the world. So as a headhunter, my A game I don't deal, God bless them, with human resources. We need those folks. We need them to take care of our health and our welfare and our psychological and physical bodies and our, our, right. our remote working and hybrid and all that. But when it comes to recruiting, I can go a lot faster. And I just work with companies to do that. The book is the baby of all of that. <laughs> the baby was born from this headhunting job with a very soulful yet prescriptive work to get people focused on not just getting a job, but getting the right one and figuring out after this master class in COVID called Life is Too Short, mm -hmm. figuring out how to get the job you really feel is the one that's in your heart. I love that. And what I'm here, what I hear you say is that. The word pivot comes to mind, which I think is a great time right now for a lot of people to pivot. When you think of all the businesses that have been impacted by COVID, when you think about lifestyles that have been changed in major and minor ways and so forth, what an opportunity to pivot. But I also love the part that you stumbled on this whole idea. It just sort of 
you acted. I remember Jim Rohn, who Jim Rohn, R-O-H-N, who was one of the early business philosophers, would say, always act when the emotion is high. Always take action when the emotion is high. And when your back was against the wall, you acted. And lo and behold, it's worked out for you. I think that's just a beautiful story um, about following the heart. You, one of the points you make is following intuition. Um, we'll, we'll, let's go there in a second, because I really want you to speak from your heart on this following your heart thing, because I live in that world along with you. I'm, we're, we're kindred spirits when it comes to that. And it seems like as I have followed my heart for so many years, things have worked out well. And I think what advice would you have for someone whose back is against the wall um, well, let's say this, let's start even further behind. What would you say to someone that to prevent them from finding themselves out of a job? Have you thought about that at all? Well, I think we face a slight dilemma in 2021 hmm. with some job DNA that's inside your bones and my bones. A lot of us have parents and grandparents that lived in a world where a stable, secure, long-lasting, full-time, good-paying <laughs> job. Right. Have I said enough words for Are you? you? No, Are you're you good. fainting? You're good. Are you falling I've out of your this. other chair? I've heard it. All right. All those things were yeah. normal, TJ. Those were normal. The those golden were, watch. Yeah. Those were things to be pursued. Those were things to be honored. Mm -hmm. Those were things to be respected. Those were normal. But when we did the research for this book, we looked deeply at the Bureau of Labor Statistics and we found that the new long term stable secure job in the United States of America is four years. Ah, All right. Okay. Got it. So that's the norm. Therefore, if you are a person who freaks out when job loss comes, you know, you're going to need to just take stock of that and realize that job change now in into the future is going to be something that happens at a quicker pace than it did in the days before. That's because technology, diversification, fragmentation, uh, it's, they're just more of us. There are more options, right? Mm -hmm. If you and I are making strawberry jam, there probably now are 78,000 strawberry jams. There used to be smuckers, right? Yep, right yeah. So, so, so I, I, I think we're living in a much more competitive, faster paced world. And if a person is very um, emotional about the idea of losing a job, I, I think you got to just rein those emotions in a little bit and be more logical and realize that in order to prepare yourself for more change, you got to really, um, you know, just have a longer view of the thing and figure out, well, if, it, you know, where do I really want to go? Am I pointing in the right direction with my career? That's the question I, I hope most people now are asking themselves. I 100% agree with that. Where do you ultimate, where, where, what's your North Star, right? And so we'll talk, yes. we'll, we'll talk about that. That's one of your chapters in your book. And I have lived that principle for 25 years now. Listen, I told my wife when we were getting married, I said, I don't know exactly what the future is going to look like, but I said, honey, I am going to do this job. It started off as a motivational speaker, morphed into becoming an author and then a leadership consultant. Um, and you know what? We had rough times. Anybody that knows my story knows that we went through some ups and some downs, but that was the commitment I made to myself. So I always look at my own life a little bit different than probably many of the people listening to this podcast is I feel like I've, I've never had a job or work for someone else for 25 years because I've always lived this internal vision that I've had and I've designed a life around it, which has equipped me 
to navigate the changes because I've had to reinvent myself and, and come out with new products and so forth. And my thought is with people that have a job, Tom, correct me if I'm right or wrong, or if I'm on the path or not, is that one piece of advice I would think would be also besides knowing your North star is right now, what are you doing to develop yourself, to brand yourself, to make yourself more valuable in the organization you work with or the one you want to go into. Any thoughts around any of that? Of course. Yeah. No, I, I, I've always been surprised working with thousands of job seekers, how often I hear a phrase repeated from every kind of person, every walk of life. There's a great similarity that comes up all the time. People say, I, I I just don't like to market myself. I'm the kind of person that just doesn't feel good about selling myself. Mm -hmm. Or they say, I've never really done it. Or they say, I've never had to do it. I've always gotten a job through, you know, a friend of mine. And then when you find yourself stuck, either out of work or let's face it, some people are stuck in their current job. Right. They feel like yep. they're really not getting enough of what they need, whether it's in terms of their responsibility or their uh, compensation. Maybe they've been there for a couple of years. They haven't had a review. They know they're being underpaid. Whether you're out of work or in work, if you get stuck, then you nailed it. You hit the, uh, the nail right on the head. You've got to get comfortable with the idea of making it known to people who need what you've got to give that you've got value and you need to show that value on a constant and regular basis. I mean, do you think that the politicians of this earth want to have to wake up at four and five o'clock every morning and go, here's my message. Here's my message. Here's my message. You know, but, but everybody does. So I, I, I have a chapter in there that simply I tried to make these things kind of basic, right? No, it's it's just called market yourself, right? And but but inside each chapter, we've got just nonstop quick tips and giveaways for people to try to understand that it doesn't take more than about five minutes a day if you're That's really right. gonna do it well and and it's like brushing your teeth, but you got to get used to it and you got to get comfortable with it. There's nothing dirty about saying, here's who I am. Here's what I've got. Here's how it works. Right. And, and you can quietly be building that value, right? Don't promote something you're not, but at the same time, go develop those skills and so forth, be the best worker you can be. And yes, l- hopefully people will notice it, but at some point you have to share it. You have to show it and opportunities will open up to you. I came across a video you did, and I love this, how to fix things. And you gave 11 points. I want to just run through these bullet points with you real quick, if that's okay, Rob. And then I'll pause between every one. And if you want to add anything to that point, hey, that'd that'd be awesome. So I was thinking to myself, you, you did a video and you're like, Hey, here are some ideas that can fix you no matter where you're at right now, whatever you're struggling with right now. Here we go. Number one, trust your intuition. Any thoughts about that one? Well, I've met some great friends and teachers along the way. Um, I have a friend named Chris Ann Morgan, who's out in California. She teaches people how to listen to their intuition. There are classes for this, okay? Yeah. There are classes for it. And, uh, you know, I, I do think it's important to be able to give yourself the quiet that's needed to find the messages that can sometimes come from to you, not from your logical mind, but, but from your intuitive mind. And those are messages that you know, often are, are ones to be followed. Love it. And I, I, where do you find that your intuition speaks loudest to you? There's a couple places I find mine It's when I'm driving in a car. I don't know if it's that mundane drive. I have ideas come to me when I'm on a run 
So usually when I'm running, those are the two areas that I, I'll have some of my greatest ideas come. So I've now moved to always carry around with me a mini recorder because I never know where that great idea is going to land on me. You've probably done a little bit of that as you've been writing this book over several months. Just you have ideas that come to you at the weirdest times and you got to get it notated down. So learning, because here's what I think as as I do research with people is that I think 50% of the listeners to this being business owners, entrepreneurs, people that want to take charge of their destiny. I would say that probably 50% of them lean heavily on the analogical logic side of the mind. And I would say probably only 30% know how to really listen to that intuition. And, but I think that's where the power is. If you can listen to that intuition, but also consider some of the analytic, analytical logic. Any thoughts around that? Yeah, well, I like what you said about travel. I mean, just to answer the previous question, I, yeah. I do think that, you know, when you get up and go, you know, and yeah. you get out of the normal four walls that surround us, um, that is a place where the body and the mind just start to act a little bit differently. But, right. you know, yeah. for me, you're looking at it. These are my music. heroes right behind mm -hmm. me, right? Mm -hmm. It's music. It's always been the way to to just do a little less thinking, a little more intuitive feeling so yeah. when you get the, that music on whatever it is i've seen it in several of your videos i've been stalking you the last few days so oh and, good but, i'm uh, I, friendly stalking right oh yeah no totally <laughs> yeah totally yeah, yeah listen to the spirit of what we're saying but but uh, but just watching some of your videos and, and it seems like every one of them you've got some music in the background so everyone yeah, yeah that's yeah. how i do it i these videos i've made one every day since 2018 wow. they're not scripted they're not there's no yeah, notes that's right i wake up every morning i put on some clothes uh, drink a little coffee and then i just go here and find something that's gonna speak to me musically like the dj of old and then sometimes those words those messages get us back to our theme which is are you doing the work you're supposed to be doing and if not what's it going to take to get there okay love it step number two you said how to fix things tell the truth. So we went from intuition to tell the truth. What did you mean by tell the truth? Well, it's the second time I'm talking about mom in this one interview. Hi, mom. Uh, <laughs> you know, my mom, God bless her, had a difficult life, very difficult life, a lot of illness. But, but the, that was the one thing. That was the one thing. It's just, you know, I took it and I tell it. And sometimes it's, uh, John Lennon says it can get you into trouble. You can lose friends, but you'll end up with the right ones, right? If you always tell the truth, Lennon said that. Yeah. Um, I, I just, you know, look, man, we, we, we have all suffered, all of us, no matter what part of this psychology and real estate and no matter where you come from in this world, we all just went through this collective, very painful, painful, unimaginable moment. And I said to friends just in the last few weeks, this is like a master class in the concept called life is too short, mm -hmm. right? So if you love somebody and you haven't told them, tell them, you know, if, if, if you're in a job and you, you know that something's terribly wrong, you could suffer in that job for the next couple of years, or you could ask the boss to sit down and have a conversation Amen. Right, and tell Amen. the truth and say, Hey, this isn't working for me. Can we, can we try to fix this? Right. Right. Whether it's in work or, or friends or, or, or your family. I, I just think that telling the truth is this is a, it's, it's called for more than ever right now. Uh, because the, the planet seems to have somehow split into these factions yeah, it does. of fact yeah. and fiction. And, you know, forget if you're a Democrat or a Republican, can we just be straight up about things? Can we just well tell said. it like it is? Well said. Tell it. I'm going to sing now. Tell it like it is. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, you know, and then there's the other thing. Let's say you sit down with your boss and then six months goes by and there's no changes. 
hey, maybe you need to be honest with yourself. Maybe this place is not the best place for you. And you need to look up. But you've at Bob. least given it the chance. You've given That's it right. the chance to figure that out, right? That's Instead right. of, <clears throat> excuse me, secretly sitting there stressing about it at night, wondering. That's right. Harboring those negative feelings. Yeah, you've had, so the, you've had the big conversation. You've had the big kid talk, right? I love it. And then you're right. And at that point, it doesn't work out, you know. Okay, number three. Time to go. What, yeah, number... we better hurry up. It's midnight. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, number three, ask for help. Any thoughts on that? Oh, God, yes. Uh, this one comes from a woman that helped me dramatically in my life. She also wrote a book. The book is called The Art of Asking. And the lady's name is Amanda Palmer. Look her up because she talks about the fact that when people are hurting in pain, there is some shame that comes ah. with that, with some folks. Mm -hmm. And that shame can create a whole lot of quiet and a whole lot of lon loneliness. And it is important when times get really, really tough to realize that mm, you're not unique. <laughs> times are tough for everyone. Everyone has struggles. So there is a really important need to learn how to ask for help. Love it. And, and have the courage to ask for help. You're not, you're not alone. Oh, love that. Can I just say something here? I often, I was just telling an audience the other day, when you have problems in your life, shrink them. When you have good mm. things that happen in your life, blow them out of proportion. Oh, that's really nice. What yeah. most people do is they have, well, I wouldn't say most. Let me, let me rephrase what I'm saying here. What some people do is they have a bad experience in their lives and they tend to blow that out of proportion. And then a good thing comes along and they tend to shrink it by being specific. Well, this only happened because of this, or this only happened because of this situation over here instead of the opposite. So I, I, I that, you just triggered that thought by, by saying you're not alone. Let's shrink the problem. Let's focus on the good. Anyway, just a thought there. It's nice. Uh, number four, heal the pain. Does that, go well, back to the, does that go back to the shame or? Well, no, we start the book really in that agony that happens after so many of us have been called into a meeting. And in that painful meeting that so many of us have had, <laughs> they start out with a line and boy, I hate this line. The line is TJ, what I'm about to say is not personal. It's just business. I read that. We're going to have to let you go. Yeah. <laughs> and I just want to go back into all those old bad movie scenes and say, of course, it's personal. I have a family. I have a mortgage. You know, yeah. <laughs> I hate that line. I hate it. Right. And and so chapter one of, of our book, I always forget the name. I'm supposed to have it memorized. No, no, What's no. it called? I'm with you. It says. I'll beat you. I'll beat it, you. It, you beat me. You okay. beat me. Hold you on, beat hold me. Hey. Come on. Go, go, go. <laughs> You know, it's not just business. It's not just business. It is personal. Yeah. And for some of us, it's even primal. There you go. Yeah. It's even primal. You can be uh, in a really painful place when your livelihood is ripped away. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to start the book and talk about understanding that pain, really speaking to it and trying to learn from it so that maybe the same pains won't happen again next time. You'll get other ones. But, but I think that, you know, when things go just, just totally south on the job, before you start the job search, you got to work through those things. Not just, not just, you know, get better, feel better, but really think it through and understand why did this go south? And, and of course, a lot of it was probably them but you got to also deal with what do you own from that? What, what, you know, what could you have done differently? I think you asked that question earlier in this conversation, you know, yeah. what could I have done differently to prevent myself from hitting the pavement? Yeah, totally. And don't get defensive. Just look at it as a tool, analyze it, analyze analyze it, it. and say, okay, yeah. this is what I'm going to do differently. This is not the end. This is just the beginning of a new life, which leads us to the next one. Number five, number five, find, 
and this is not chapters. This is just this little video you did on how to fix yeah. things. Um, well, I've done 800 of them. I don't even remember yeah, this one. No, no, you're, no, no. You're, you're reminding me. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Find your North Star. This is a chapter in your book. Oh, yeah. And, and I just want to read something. Was it Grandma Janie? Did, am I saying her name right? Yeah, Janie. Oh, Jamie? Janie. 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 J-A-N-I-E. Okay, this is what you said in the book. Grandma Janie was a goddess of unconditional love in my life. Her ever-present spirit wants to share five words if you're struggling looking for work, a phrase she repeated any time I was wrestling with a decision. Quote, you'll know when you know. Rob, I love that. I remember early in my career, I was scared. I was going from job to job and I had this opportunity to work for Tony Robbins. I called up Charlie Tremendous Jones, used to be a well-known motivational speaker in the 60s and 70s, happened to stumble upon him in his 80s. I told him my concern. Should I leave this job that I started and we're doing well financially or should I go live my dream, if you will? Should I start this new North Star that I had envisioned my whole life? And I remember Charlie Tremendous Jones said something like your grandma. He said, TJ, you were not born to make right or wrong decisions. You were born to make decisions and then make them right. Oh, it's beautiful. I just think it's a way of trusting like your grandma, just trust. You'll know it when it shows up, you'll know it. And at this, and then to take action, trusting that, Hey, every decision is not final. Right. You can adjust in life. You can change in life. Any thoughts around any of that? Yeah. Beautiful. And and you also cannot control everything. Amen. Right. Stuff is outside your control. You can do, <clears throat> excuse me, the best that you possibly can in any situation. But right. there are outside forces and factors that could take that perfect game plan and rip the rug right out from underneath. So okay. then then you've got to take stock and figure out where to go next. So yeah, we're, we're, we're really, we seem to be interestingly enough coming back to that word intuition, mm -hmm. you know, we it's are. that yeah. knowing beyond comprehension sometimes right. that just gives you the, the answer. I mean, the most shocking thing, I could, there's a shocking thing about this book. The shock is that one of the most magical souls on earth has given us permission to share something in this book and it's Bob Dylan and Bob Dylan talks in chapter four, which is the North star. He talks about how to know, right? Yeah, Grandma yeah. Janie opens the book and says, you'll know when you know. And then by the time you get about into the middle of the book, here comes Bob Dylan mm -hmm. to talk about how to know when you're doing it right versus doing it wrong. And I'm the publisher always says, don't give it away in the interviews. No one will buy okay. the book. Okay. <laughs> no, but get the book. I'm a first time author. I don't know. But, but Bob Dylan's in there with something to say, if you're stuck. All right. He's, he's got something to okay. say. We'll leave it God at that. Bless get the book, get the book, <laughs> figure out what that is. Let's just go through a couple of these. You said number six, Stay on that path, grow your tribe, practice your voodoo, that social voodoo I'm assuming you're talking mm -hmm. about right there. Yeah. Will you just in a quick snippet, uh, what's, what do you mean by social voodoo? Well, so, social, social media is magic these days. Depending on how old you are, you may have grown up in a world Wait, where there was CBS, ABC, NBC, so right? True. This is how we got the outer world to come into our inner life through this little screen, but there were only three networks sending stuff out, right? And most of the people in the world who got their news and entertainment and information, they were just coming to you from a very finite universe. That's right. Well, now... Thank you, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. Instagram, TikTok, YouTube. We can go on and on and on. You and I are capable 
right at this moment of doing something in this teeny little video and putting it on any one of those platforms and having it be seen, what day of the week is this? I don't know. Let's just make believe today is Thursday. Yeah. This could be seen today, Thursday, by more people than are going to watch a show on NBC tonight. Good. That's a fact. Mm -hmm. That's a fact. So if you're a job seeker and you're not spending at least five minutes a day, just five, creating some valuable social media content and sharing it on any of these platforms in order to build your professional brand to the point where you will be discovered by that one person who's capable of hiring you for the greatest job of your life. And there's another long story in the book about how I'm sitting in my office one night at 1030, trying to learn Twitter. Twitter was brand new at that point. And I was a 40 something year old guy with a 20 something year old staff. And one of the 20 something people on my staff is trying to teach the old man how to do Twitter. Right. And I'm on there trying not to be stupid with it. And the, Founder, inventor, creator, and CEO of YouTube found me on Twitter, and we started a dialogue, and it led to millions of dollars into my little dumb company because I was on social media at 1030 at night for five minutes. So if you're in a job search saying, yeah, that's fool's stuff. I don't have time for that. It's dumb stuff, TikTok dances, whatever. Uh-uh. <laughs> That's where the biggest people in the world are right now. Um, and, and, and your next paycheck. So, so you got to learn to practice this voodoo for good. Perfect. That's really great. The uh, number eight was no, number nine was target your search. Number 10 was interview, negotiate, uh, and close like a pro. And then in the end, give back. I love that. These are just some great little nuggets that you have here. You said in the book, I've learned that the largest salary is never the top of anyone's list. <laughs> I know where you're going. <laughs> <laughs> and you have, okay, yeah, go. You, you take us there, right? The two things, right? Well, yeah, look, I... Again, this just doesn't come from me. This comes from thousands of job seekers that I've worked with. People do not have an interest in working for assholes anymore. Amen. That's number one on the list. Amen. It's not money. It's life, again, too short to be working for somebody who is abusing you, either right. uh, emotionally or, or financially, you name it. Anything that ends with L-Y that hurts it's coming from your boss. That's got to be stopped. Time is up for that. Okay. Good. These people are being outed one by one by one and a whole lot of bad behavior that has taken place and been acceptable in business for a long time. Why? Because, well, you know, they're successful or they, they're rich or they have money. People are just tired of that. Agreed. Okay. And, 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 and so if, if you're going to be entering, if you're going to be making that, transition from out of work to back in work, then the number one thing you should be focused on is who is the person that I'm going to be working for. And they're, they're researching us as candidates. We better do some research on them. We better do a little background checking, right? It's not that hard, especially if somebody is kind of a secret monster. You can find out quite a bit about that if you're just willing to spend a little bit of extra time and ask around and say, what kind of guy is TJ? You know, wow. because because you could accept the money and be feeling really, really great the minute you've signed the deal and you've got the new job. And then four weeks later, you're working for somebody who'll sell you out in a second. That's right. So what have you done? Like, you know, you, you went for the quick money without really understanding that it's important to uh, ask around, right? Reference checks. I'm doing reference checks. As soon as we get off this call, I've got to do three more reference checks for a finalist for a big, 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 big job. What I hope my candidate is doing 
is I hope my candidate is spending time getting some reference checks on the gentleman who will become his new boss before he signs this deal. He should ask around. I love that, Rob. Rob, I mean, that just makes me think what's going through my mind right now is what you just described is, hey, have the confidence to take charge of your destiny. And that starts with knowing the the office you're going to go into, who you're going to work for, ask around, find out some things, right? You're Listen, at some point in life, you have to assert your value. And I don't mean from a prideful place. What I don't want people to miss here is think that they can come in and be prideful about their stance or what their value and so forth. It's about being humble, but it's about being confident at the same time. Do your homework. I love that, Rob. That's really, that's about taking charge of your destiny. All right, let's start winding down. I did have a couple notes here. Email advice. You said, do yourself and everyone you ever exchange emails with a favor by working harder to keep all e- uh, communication to the fewest words possible. So <laughs> in a, an email, in an email, in an email. Yeah. Okay. In an email. Yeah. 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 You can drop now the sounds good. Thanks. Gotcha. Okay. XO. You know, there's, we're wasting so much time that could be put, to much better use by putting too many words in an email. I'm a big fan of super concise communication. When you're emailing in business, just get to the point, ask for what you want, get in, get out, you know, don't, 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 <laughs> the minute, you know how you feel when you open up your, your emails, you get, you know, and you look at one, it's like, whoa, <laughs> you see one of these long Oh ones. yeah. That's like, oftentimes forks. I won't even read them. They're just That's too long. A fork in the eye. Yeah. Yeah. I'm with you. Okay. <laughs> last one. And I, and I just want to rem- remind everybody, well, actually tell them right now, where can they get your book? This is awesome. Oh my gosh. Thanks for asking everywhere. Books are sold, you know, Amazon, oh, yeah. if you get it there, uh, it's, it's Amazon. There's an ebook you can get the Kindle. You can get the audio book. Mm-hmm. Did you and do the you audio do, book? Did you do the audio? I did. That was hard, man. I've never done one of those before. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It is hard. <laughs> that was hard. Have you done them? <laughs> oh, oh yeah. I've done all my books. On that, it. And I, that I, was I, hard. Who, who knew? Who knew? Who knew? Yeah. Every little mistake, <laughs> you have to restate it and then someone has to go back and clean it up. Anyway. That was hard work. So anyway, so uh, Amazon's got it in all those flavors. And then the, the home base for this book and the home base for all of what we do to help people on both sides of the hiring table, you go to robbarnettmedia.com. We'll put that if up you, there. If you go robbarnettmedia.com slash book, then we've got all kinds of stuff about this and you can buy it in just about any other platform you like, whatever, whatever you like, it's all, it's all at that one destination for you. Oh, that's great here. Let me, let's end with this going back to leadership and I'm just going to read it because you wrote it and I just love it. It's an example that I want every leader, every leader listening to this podcast right now to take to heart, to, to think about, to consider Remember, you're there to serve your people, not to be served. And, and the better you can do that um, without being taken advantage of, there's a balance there. But this is what you said. When I was in my mid-30s, I was extremely lucky to have a manager who made our mission and goals clear. Mike was the kind of leader who didn't keep moving the goalpost making it impossible to win. Mike didn't run a, quote, nothing is good enough environment. Love that. This outstanding leader regularly gave our team support, feedback, and rewards for a job well done. Instead of the usual level of stress and unrealistic expectations that can bring any of us to our knees, this boss made it his business to make sure that we could do our business without any unnecessary drama. Mm. Our fearless leader wasn't quite as lucky with his own boss. However, if he was reamed out by the head of the company, he, I love that this is really powerful. If he was reamed out by the head of the company, he'd walk back, back down the hall to his direct reports 
and prevent that crap <laughs> from <laughs> flowing downstream downstream mike didn't take the heat out on us we'd all come up with achievable solutions on what he needed and take back down to the corner office as a remedy. I love that. A leader who, even if he's reamed out, he's not then spreading that venom throughout the team. Any, any, any last thoughts there? No, I tried to get that all on the page. Thank you for sharing it because uh, that is the kind of boss we all want to work for. Yeah. You know, it's, a, it's way more common uh, if the boss is in trouble to try to sort of put that pain and suffering on their people and, 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 you know, really just vent it and let it out. It takes a real mature, yeah, mature. soul and, and somebody that you want to work for someone you want to help, right? We want to send them back down to the big scary corner office with a, with a solution that's going to work. So imagine what it's like when Mike comes down and goes, all right, here's the deal. You know, like with this just total like, hey, yeah. we got it. We'll figure it out as opposed to we need to get together right now and sit down. And, you know, yeah. you know, that all the, that's, that's, the, right. that's the typical person, you know. So I just wanted to to do that. And <clears throat> excuse me, you reminded me since it's only the first couple of days. I haven't put this in the mail to Mike yet. I got to do that. Oh, yeah. Make sure you do that. I love <laughs> I it. Haven't done, right. I've been so busy. All right. In, I wanted to surprise him. In closing. Yeah. Any last thing someone should know about anything that you wrote about in your book? Do you have any last thoughts that maybe you'd like to share? And then we'll bring it to a close. Yeah, don't do it alone. Uh, don't do it alone. A job search uh, done alone uh, can be a very, very difficult uh, and, and long process. And the way to make that process a little bit easier and a lot less difficult is to put a little tribe together, even if it's three or four mm. or five people, find some people that are swimming in this same sea looking for land and get together and help each other, keep each other on track. Say, hey, why don't we, you know, why don't we have this Zoom every Friday at noon where we'll go over our progress for the week and figure out if we can help each other land a couple more interviews. I just think that building a tribe is a nice key to getting through a job search just a little bit more sane. Love it. Rob, one thing that you really did well, I thought, with the book is not only wonderful stories, I can feel your heart in the book, but I also love all the steps. Every page, you, every other page you go to, you have a set of, here, here's a quick few steps that you can jump on today. You can take advantage of this, this thought today, the strategy today. And I just, I thought that was really powerful. So as a reminder in closing, you can get his book, Next, Next Job, Best Job, wherever books are sold. So make sure that you go get your copy. And then you can also check Rob out by going to, let me get it right, Rob Barnett Media. Dot com is that right and then you can and then and then you can do and then you can do forward slash if i heard you right you can do forward slash book and find out more about the book there. yeah you can just you can surf all over the thing all right all right <laughs> thanks tj i really appreciate the time you betcha it's great to have you on the unleash your greatness within podcast thanks a lot rob